Let me start by describing what are stem cells. Stem cells are cells that have the ability to multiply endlessly and to become cells of any tissue. To really understand what makes, that, what makes them so special, we simply need to understand that all the other types of cells in the body, cells of the retina, of the heart, of the pancreas, of the liver, uh, of the stomach, of the lung, do not multiply and do not convert transform to become cells of another, uh, of another tissue. So this is really, really specific to stem cells. Multiply endlessly, and, then, and they, be, they can become cells of various tissues. There are in nature two different types of stem cells, generally speaking. Embryonic stem cells, they are extracted from human embryos. We're talking about an 8 to 10, 10 days old embryo. It's, it's a microscopic lump of cells about the size of the tip of a needle. It's possible to extract cells from the embryo, grow them in a test tube, and make them to proliferate, to differentiate into various types of, of tissues. It's also possible to inject in the stem cell uh, various DNA segments and to carry these DNA segments into various tissues so that as the stem cells, embryonic stem cells become cells of these tissue, they bring a new segment of DNA to these tissues. So these are the, this is the general use of embryonic stem cells. On the other end, we have adult stem cells. Adult stem cells are stem cells present in any living organism. So in a, in a baby that is one minute old, the stem cells are referred to as adult stem cells. Umbilical cord stem cells are adult stem cells. Placenta stem cells are also adult stem cells. Their primary source is the bone marrow. From the bone marrow, they can go in the blood. From the blood, they can go to various tissues. So we can extract them from the bone marrow, from the blood, or from the skin, lipid tissue, the dental pulp. Many places in the body we can find adult stem cells. Traditionally, adult stem cells from the bone marrow are known to be precursors to blood cells. They become red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, lymphocytes, various types of blood cells and connective tissue, some bones, but that's their limitation. They, they really cannot become anything else. That's the traditional knowledge about bone marrow stem cells. What has been discovered a few years ago, which is probably one of the biggest discoveries of our time, is that bone marrow stem cells do indeed become blood cells, but also have the ability of becoming virtually any kind of cell types in the body. Uh, if we take an adult stem cells, put it in the liver, they become liver cells. If we put them in the brain, they become brain cells. We put them in the heart, they become heart cells. And so on and so forth for virtually any kind of, 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 of tissues of the body. In fact, what was discovered, uh, and this is the topic of a recent book that I, that I just published called Cracking the Stem Cell Code, uh, which has more than 400 scientific references. So it's a very, very solid book. What all this literature is describing is that stem cells, not only can they become cells of various tissue, but they do so, and they do so, they do so every day as they constitute our natural renewal or repair system. Anytime a tissue has a problem, a big problem or a small problem, we're talking here, here of a cut, a small degener degenerative problem, or a heart attack, a stroke, a bone fracture, a burn of the skin, if there is a problem, the tissue that has the problem will release very specific compounds that have been well defined that will go to the bone marrow, trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. The number of stem cells uh, in the blood will increase. Now the tissue that is affected is also going to secrete other compounds that will attract stem cells. As the stem cells circulate in the, mic in the, uh, the capillaries of the affected tissue and these compounds are being secreted, they attract the stem cells and they migrate across the capillary wall in the tissue. When they arrive in the tissue, they proliferate and they become cells of that tissue. This is our natural renewal system, our natural repair system. In all this process, we need stem cells to be released from the bone marrow, to circulate in the blood, to migrate in a tissue or be recruited by, by a tissue, then to proliferate and to differentiate in cells of that tissue. Of these five steps, the one that has been shown and documented as the most important is the number of circulating stem cells. More stem cells circulating in the bloodstream means that more stem cells are available to migrate in the various tissues and henceforth we have a more effective repair system in the body. In the body. So anything that we can do that will enhance or increase the number of circulating stem cells uh, will end up being good for health. Uh, exercise will increase the 
number of stem cells uh, in the bloodstream. Uh, melatonin that we produce when we sleep well, when we have deep uh, REM, REM sleep, and we produce melatonin, it supports the proliferation of stem cells. Uh, there are some herbal products that have been shown, uh, one that has been shown to support uh, the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. These are all things that will help the body in its overall repair uh, process. So with this new understanding of the natural role of stem cells in the body, this is leading us to an entirely new way of looking at health and wellness. And I believe that it's literally going to change the way that we practice medicine. If we think today of the way that we see disease formation, each disease is the consequence of the loss of a specific type of cells. Diabetes is the loss of cells making insulin in the pancreas. Uh, cardiomyopathies, heart problems, is the loss of cardiomyocytes, heart cells. Um, uh, macular degeneration is the loss of, of cells in the retina. Parkinson is the loss of cells making dopamine in the brain. And the way to compensate for this, what we do, we do two things. We try to prevent the loss by doing all kinds of things that are in the field of preventive medicine. So we have a good diet, we watch our lifestyle, uh, we try to take dietary supplement, antioxidants, we try to have good rest, we manage stress, everything that we know that is good to try to maintain health. When it's too late, uh, we then compensate for the problem. With diabetes, we inject insulin. With Parkinson, a lack of dopamine, we give L-DOPA, a precursor to, to dopamine. Uh, if we have, uh, uh, let's go to the extreme, we have a spinal cord lesion, we use a wheelchair. We, 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 if we can't compensate for the problem, we just teach people how to learn to live with the problem. But that's essentially what we're doing. What we're discovering here in this entire picture is that there's another side to this equation. Disease formation and health problems are not only the loss of cells, because health is actually a balance between cellular loss and tissue renewal. We also replace these cells. We've all heard these sentences, these phrases. You have a new heart, uh, sorry, a new body every two years, four years, seven years. The number here does not matter because each tissue is different. You have a new lining of the, of the uh, intestinal mucosa every five days or so, a new lung every roughly four years, new liver every four years, new heart every let's, 15, 20 years. The time here is not relevant. What is relevant is that when we hit, let's say, 60 years old, we've all had a few numbers of these organs. The equivalent, in terms of cellular renewal, the equivalent of new organs and tissues. So we've lost them and we've renewed them. So, and we've not been sick before. So cellular loss is not really the issue. The issue is a reduced ability to renew these tissues. So really the culprit now falls on stem cells. It is more disease formation and health problem is more a deficiency in our ability to regenerate tissue and repair tissues with stem cells. So suddenly health becomes a balance between two processes, cellular loss and cellular renewal. So once we learn the natural role of stem cells in the body and we find ways to support their role in the body, we are literally tapping into an entire way, an entirely new way of promoting health, maintaining health. Right now, the best approach to health is preventive medicine. And it's a little bit like, like if I was telling you the best way to be wealthy is to avoid bankruptcy. And we know that it's a ridiculous statement. You, nobody will be wealthy by preventing, by avoiding bankruptcy. But health, that, that, that's how we, tra we treat health. We think that we will be very healthy if we simply prevent disease. And it's not the case. We all know that there's a vast gray area behind, uh, between radiant optimal health and actual disease process, having a disease. And in between is this vast area where we don't sleep as good as before, we don't have a memory that is good as before, we don't concentrate as good as, as before, we have little aches and pains here and there, we just we truly do not function as well as we used to function, but we don't have a disease. We're in that area where the body has an opportunity, has the potential to renew itself and reach this optimal health by simply enhancing the process of tissue repair. I truly believe that it's, it's a, 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 a knowledge altogether that is called to change the way that we view medicine.